This is the 38th video that I'm making on uh, financial math for actuarial exam 2, also called actuarial exam FM. In video number 37, we looked at part A of a problem. Uh, we're going to look at part B of the same problem, 2.1.27 in this video. We're going to be deriving identities relating future values of annuities immediate with future values of annuities due, using what we saw in the last video about corresponding identities for present values. I'm stating the question a bit differently in the book. I am trying to emphasize the use of these identities. These are identities for present values, as well as some other identities which are supposed to be intuitive. We have talked about these kinds of identities before to derive the following identities related to future values. All right, um, the use of these identities is essentially accomplished by the following take this, this string of equations and multiply it, multiply everything by 1 plus i to the n. What happens when you do so? This is the present value of an annuity due. You've got n payments of 1 separated by one period. You find this present value right before the first payment when you multiply it by 1 plus i to the n, that promotes it in time n periods into the future. And by definition, that gives you the future value of the annuity due. It's evaluated one period after the last payment. So by definition, a n double dot times 1 plus i to the n does give you s n double dot. And I will again suppress the i's to save some time here. Same kind of thing is going to happen when you multiply this thing by 1 plus i to the n. You'll get 1 plus i times 1 plus i to the n times a n. But this part right here is s n. We're using these identities essentially so far, and we will continue to do so. So that verifies this equality. That's what we've verified so far. Moving on to the next equality, we want to verify this one. Multiply this part by 1 plus i to the n. So you've got 1 plus i to the n times a n. That will be s n. It will match this. You also have 1 plus i times 1 minus 1 plus i times v to the n. 1 plus i to the n, excuse me, 1 plus i to the n times v to the n is 1. v, we know, is 1 over 1 plus i. Therefore, 1 plus i to the n times v to the n equals 1. We're subtracting it, so we get a minus 1. 1 plus i to the n times 1 is 1 plus i to the n. This thing right here, again, is sn. And that does it. This expression matches what we see here. Let's move on to the last expressions here and here. Next, and the final thing we'll do will be looking at these two things, which is the hardest one. If I multiply this by 1 plus i to the n, well, it's pretty obvious by this fact again that you get this. I won't even bother writing it down. 1 plus i to the n times 1 is 1 plus i to the n minus 1 plus i to the n times v to the n is minus 1. The d in the bottom stays the same. All right, now we do the hardest one. 1 plus i to the n times this thing here will give you 1 plus i to the n plus 1 plus i to the n times a n minus 1. I want to make use of this identity here that means I need to separate out n minus one of those factors like this. Now I can make use of that identity. Oops, this is supposed to be an n minus one here. This right here is sn minus one. But we're still not quite finished. We want to see that this expression equals this. Now I think it might be best for us to go back to the series definitions of these things.
what is this future value as a series. Um, it might be good for you to try to pause the video and see if you can figure it out on your own. But what it is, is it's a series of n minus 1 payments. Evaluated in time immediately after the last payment. That future value is Sn minus 1. Therefore, as a series, it's 1 coming from this last payment, plus the second of the last payment promoted in time forward by 1 period to 1 plus i, plus the third to the last payment promoted forward by 2 periods, 1 plus i squared, etc. There are going to be n minus 1 of these. The last one over here, it has to be promoted in time forward by n minus 2 periods. There's n minus 1 terms here in this sum right there. Multiply the 1 plus i through and do a bit of rearranging. And that's going to give us this. There we go. Uh, we claim that this equals this, which if you use the series for Sn plus 1, you can see pretty much right away. If you can't see it, I'll write it out here. Sn plus 1 minus 1. Use the series for Sn plus 1. Derive it in an analogous way that we derived the series for Sn minus 1. We will get 1 plus 1 plus i plus 1 plus i squared. We're going to have n plus 1 terms. So the last one here is going to be 1 plus i to the n. Then we're subtracting 1. Those 1's cancel. And what we're left with right here, that is the same as what's up here. So the derivation of that last one definitely was the most involved but they are the same. Let's end the video by thinking about the meaning of the quality between these things with the number line. Here's time 0, time 1, time 2, time 3, etc. Let's make this be time n minus 1, time n, and time n plus 1. All right, Sn double dot, future value of an annuity due. Um, the present value of an annuity due is evaluated in time right before the first payment. This one has to be n years later, so it has to be evaluated one period after the last payment. If my payments are at 1, 2, 3 through n, Sn double dot has to be evaluated at time n plus 1. There's Sn double dot. If I want to see the equality of Sn double dot with all these things, I'm going to need to evaluate these things at the appropriate times. Uh, first for this, I can take the same income stream. That's the future value of the same income stream as an annuity immediate, which means evaluate it in time immediately after the last payment. There's Sn. Of course, I promote this in time forward by one period. i got to multiply it by 1 plus i giving us the first equality, the timeline meaning of the first equality. What about the timeline meaning of this thing equaling the future value of this annuity due? Um, let's see. I think what we want to do there, that involves a, a future value of an annuity immediate with n payments. Let's imagine n payments starting at time 2 instead of time 1, ending at time n plus 1, the future value immediately after the last one at time n plus 1 is Sn. There are n payments there. I want to see how it's related to the uh, future value at that time of the original annuity, going from time 1 to time n. Well, I have to add on this 1 at time n plus 1, um, or actually subtract it off because it's not in the original one. That's why I have a minus 1 there. 
but I did not include the in the original one, in the new one, the value, the payment of one at time one from the original one. That has to be added back on, or more precisely, its future value at time n plus one has to be added back on. Time n plus one is n periods forward from time one. I need to multiply this by one plus i to the n and add it. That's where the one plus i to the n comes from. We'll finally focus on this one. We'll ignore this one since that's not really uh, what we're focused on here as far as the number line interpretation. Why does it also equal this thing here? Now think about an annuity with n plus one payments starting at time one and going up through time n plus one. The future value of that evaluated immediately after the last payment at time n plus one is Sn plus one. You would think of it as an annuity immediate. How is that different from the original annuity in blue? It's got this extra payment at the end. So to match up with the original annuity due at time n plus one, I need to subtract off that payment at the end, that payment of one at time n plus one. That's why I do the subtraction of one there. Okay, once again, kind of hard to follow if you're not real familiar with these things. And whether you follow it well or not, it's definitely something to continue thinking about. This, this timeline method especially is very important if you're going to be able to have success as an actuary. Let me also say that that fortunate coincidence that happened in the last video happens here in this one. The future value of an annuity due can be found with this formula, where D, the discount rate, is in the bottom. The word due starts with D and we've got a D in the bottom, whereas when it's the future value of an annuity immediate, it's an I in the bottom instead, and the word immediate starts with I. So once again, that fortunate coincidence still holds in future values as well as present values.